to somebody, buddy. That's all good, dude. I think it's real hard things that people don't understand, like trauma, you know? Yeah, when I was a kid, I used to scratch my gum. I'd have a hole in my gum. You know, I'm... Just from being nervous and stuff? Nah, just anxiety, you know? Hey, how are you? I'm perfect, man. I don't watch it. I don't think I will. I'm glad he cried and he got it out. I, it's the end of that. Today's a bit of a special one. We actually had the opportunity to chat with Dricus Duplessy about his upcoming bout, some of his past. If you guys have seen our 10 interesting facts videos, that's literally what that's going to be for. But at the end of that interview, I had some extra time with him to discuss what's been going on with Sean Strickland. Of course, he was on the Theo Vaughn podcast, and uh, I wanted to get some of his thoughts on it. I don't watch it. I don't think I will. You know, watching a grown man cry in an interview, it's not, my, it's not really my watch material that I go and watch, but, you know, it is. It is what it is. I'm glad he cried and he got it out. I, it's the end of that. Yeah, I think we give him a lot more credit than he deserves in terms of mindset. I don't think he thinks about anything. I think um, he goes out there and he, and he fights. He fights the way Sean Strickland fights. He always has, and he's an incredible fighter. I have a lot of respect for him as a fighter. I think he's incredible. Do I think he's a hypocrite? 100%. 100%. Obviously, you no know, childhood trauma is something you can't help, but you know, if you know what it feels like to be at, at uh, the one on the receiving end of such trauma, don't inflict it on others because that's exactly what he does. So, yes, I mean, I feel bad for him. I don't, I don't, I don't think any kid deserves that ever. Yeah, I, I think it, it is hypocritical to be so vulnerable towards your situation when people call you out on it, to be so affected by it but yet to throw shots at anyone who's on the desk with you, like he was throwing shots at Sean O'Malley. Well, he very memorably, when Khalil Roundtree cried at one of the post-fight mm. press conferences, mm. he was calling him he was calling him a, p a pussy. That's what he was calling him. He was saying he wasn't a real man, all this kind of stuff. So it is interesting. I think it does come back to the fact that it's, it's a hurt person trying to hurt others. It's like a classic bully type thing. It's like they are bullying because there's something wrong with them at home or there's something that's bothering them that we don't know about. And I think Strickland has never been able to deal with the things that happened to him in a healthy way or have, have a constructive device to help him through and not put that hurt he has on other people. Yeah, so if you listen to the whole podcast, Sean talks about how he thinks he has an antisocial disorder. Like he is antisocial because he was raised in that way where he didn't even, he's like, he said he's like homeschooled and stuff, which basically meant he never went to school. So yeah, I think you're right. He, he hasn't really got a way to, to deal with it. And I guess it's hypocritical for him to call out Khalil, but at the same time, I'm sure he looks at what he did in terms of like crying and breaking down and calls himself the same the same things he, he i don't think he has flipped on that i think he, he still believes that kind of an attitude is gonna you know it means you're less of a man or whatever so yeah i mean like I, ian gary came back at sean and, and said pretty much what drick has just said like how dare you inflict your pain on me and my family so i feel like drick and, and ian have the same kind of perspective on that sure i mean and then you if you go off to other people eventually they're going to come off to you and i think he's uh, he's used to being the bully and he's not used to being bullied but you know i don't have to hammer on that i already won that fight i won the i won that press conference uh, you know he's not but you know i don't want to keep on hammering on the same thing you know he is he cried on theo von's um podcast i guess it was terrible and i, I you know like i said no kid deserves that no kids deserve to go through that but if you want to dish it out you better take it and you know like I said, I have mad respect for him as a fighter, even as a person. He's, he's always been a straight-up guy. Even the fact that he tried to fight me in the crowd, that was him being a man. What I'm saying is, you know, if you want to dish it out, be able to take it, man, or you're just a hypocrite. You didn't deserve, to, you didn't deserve that as a kid, but as a grown man, you dish it out, you're going to get it. That is the way the world works, unfortunately. And, you know, like I said, with his mindset going to this fight, I think he's going to come out and fight the way Sean Strickland fights. My mindset, I don't care about him. I care about me, what I do, what I go out there to do, and that has become the world champion. Whether he's angry, whether he's not, does he have motivation? I see everybody talking about Sean Chicken having muscle now. Well, welcome to being a professional. I've had it my whole career. Nice, you have abs for the first time. I'm really happy for you. But that's what you should look like as a professional athlete. Good job. I'm really happy that I could motivate you to get some abs. But, you know, it doesn't bother me. You know, good luck with those abs. I've been fighting with mine for years. 
I really feel like, you know, people in the comments are going to give their opinion. I feel like that's going to be the 50-50 split of this community. It's like one side are going to be like, well, if you're going to say it, then you should be able to take it. And the other side are going to be like, you know, he's gone for a ton of trauma. Like, how dare you rally against Sean Strickland from what, from what he's been through and what he's come to. So he's got a good point in some ways in that, like, if you make those things public and bring them up and almost use it in a way to not promote yourself but like connect yourself to your audience and then almost channel that kind of energy towards other people to stir up shit he is kind of right that like if it comes back towards you you shouldn't really be necessarily surprised about that i don't think it's like a good idea to cross that line and, and say necessarily the things that he said but like i think that is what a lot of people are going to say i do think a lot of people are going to say hey man like you said it you, you've been talking shit to other people you expect to get it back I would be curious to ask, you know, people watching this, if they were one of the folks that would say, oh yeah, it's not the ultimate feelings championship. You you can say mean things. I do wonder if other people are more sympathetic to Sean because, you know, he's not really that guy. And then you see him doing that. Does it change anybody's outlook? I'm just curious. In that podcast, he talks a lot about things he does in his life to help him stay on the straight and narrow. In an environment with someone like Theo Von, who's super understanding and will like help you like guide that. Because this is a guy who's been to numerous AA meetings where those kind of stories are shared all the time, you know, and he's obviously been in that situation. So the narrative of like you're gonna you're gonna have to learn to take it if you deal it out. I don't necessarily think he doesn't understand that. I just think he was just feeling maybe a little bit more vulnerable that day and when he did bring it up he was just emotional over it when people find out about that thing and you are the trash talker they're gonna use it back at you yeah, and then true. the first thing drick has said at the time was like oh it touched the nerve and it's like and then he's gonna harp on that the whole time whether he carries on saying things like that i don't think he will from what he's just told us but you could see like in that face off they had uh, Sean was immediately eye contact as soon as they came out. Sean never has eye contact with anyone he fights. He's always kind of too embarrassed, pretends it's gay to look in a man's eyes. But as soon as he came up, he was like right in his face. And you know he wanted to do something because he had touched that soft spot. But it's just like you kind of brought it on yourself. As, as much as I sympathize with Sean, I think it's incredibly sad what happened. And it's, it is nice to see that humility in him on the podcast. But... You know, is that is 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 it's a fifty fifty really, isn't it? I mean, I will say there is like a really endearing part about Sean. Like, there's this really gruff side to him that I think a lot of people really like. I mean, I think there is a part of the internet that everybody just likes when you could just say whatever the fuck you wanted, didn't matter. And I totally understand that. And I get where people are coming from on that. But it was also just, I don't know, yeah, like you said, kind of humanizing to see him break that wall for a second but like you can't watch when he beat izzy and he finally cracks and cried when he got the belt put on him and he's like the whole time he's talking about oh i don't need no fucking belts you know he's like I, i'm just i just get up here and i fight he's like then well, you clearly don't it clearly means everything to you. you don't train as hard as you do just because you like fighting i'm sure he does but there's there's a means to an end there's a, there's a means to I an end. It's both, like yeah. once you get there you find like fuck i was doing it for this 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 is the reason why i was doing it the whole time and like that whole uh, period he had in Australia, I think did a lot for Sean because he he said how the fans got him through the fight is like they kept cheering him on, it made him want to fight more. And it's like I think there's such a struggle between between his personality and he, in his thoughts and his like rep representation to the public. What Colby said, you know, that wasn't that was you know talking about somebody's uh, parents that died, you know, anybody that died, it's it's. You know, it's not something to be, to be taken lightly. And definitely not something to be joked over. Now, when I said what I said about Sean Strickland, um, I didn't joke about it. I spoke the truth because he's been very outspoken about it. He spoke about it. He was making jokes about it. I was never joking about it. I stated facts. I never joked about it. Not once. I don't agree with what Corby did. You know, talking about somebody's uh, dead family is really, that is 100% stepping over a line. 100%. Uh, and I don't think Corby Cummington is a bad guy. I honestly don't. I think he's an incredible fighter. Uh, obviously, on his last performance was was not good, but you know, Corby is an incredible fighter, and you know, he had this persona, and he said what he said. I don't know. You know, he's doubling down on it, so that that's his that's his choice. I don't think he's a bad guy. And like with Sean, I think you know he says these outrageous things, and he's almost like kind of bullying people when it comes to the trash talkers. What do you say? He's willing to say whatever. And, uh, you know, he, 
you know, he got it back. But like I said, I really feel bad that he had to go through that as a kid. It's not, it's not great, but nothing I can do about it. Did he cross the line? Did Drickus cross the line? Well, a part of me feels like that in some way he was trying to just promote the fight. Do you know what I mean? But like, I think he was mainly just trying to get under his skin. I don't know if he feels bad about what he said. Like, I, I, did, he, did he say that? He said he was speaking facts. Yeah, because he, he's just sort of running with the narrative that Sean started, really, and just finding a way to, you know, get inside his, 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 his head, it seems like to me. But it's also you could trying to get one up on your opponent, and you don't say something like "I'm going to beat you like your dad did when you were when you were a boy." People just say it because they don't necessarily know the history of the person. When you actually know what that person has been through, and they've talked about it, and then then you say it, it kind of hits on another yeah. level, doesn't it? Like also, someone like Sean, as much of as a shit talker he is, you would think, oh, maybe this probably won't bother him, so I'll just throw it out there because he's shit talking me. Yeah, maybe I'll throw it back, and it's, we all kind of understand this, this is the game we're playing. But, yeah, I don't think he maybe knew what he was getting into when he said it. I'm not saying Drickus is 100% bad for saying it, but I think it's a bad thing to say, you know, not knowing the full situation, like you've said. I think, in a I, way, I think he's kind of towing that line of, like, oh, I'm just saying facts, which is true, but we also know why you said it. Yeah. It's like, I think, uh, so another part of it is, like, I think people have always, we know people have always underestimated Drickus. Like, they underestimate his fighting ability, and, you know, even going head-to-head -head with... Israel, I think he handled that situation pretty well. But I think Sean probably underestimated him going into the press conference. He probably thought, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to talk shit to this guy. You know, he's a professional. He's not going to say much. And then Drickus, you know, refuses to be underestimated. And it's a way of him saying, I'm going to meet your intensity and the shit you talk about in a certain way. So I think there's part of that as well, you know. Uh, I'll say I'm not crazy about what Drickus said. Yeah, I understand you're trying to fight fire with fire. I totally get that. But... I'm not crazy about that because, yeah, you can say whatever you want, and that is part of the appeal of MMA. MMA is one of the few places that you go in 2024 now to watch something, and it's totally uncut, totally raw. Somebody's getting slept. Somebody's getting submitted. There's no controlling it. It just does whatever the fuck it does, and that extends to the press conferences as well. And you see that in a moment like this. I mean, Sean says in that podcast that, that UFC is the last American sport because you can say and do whatever you want. Like he says, if I was in the NBA and I said any of the things I've said, they would have kicked me out already by Easy. now. You know what I mean? Easy. But like in the UFC, like you, exactly what you just said. So That's a weird argument to make, though, because a lot of people make the argument that this isn't a sport, especially people that fight his style will say, we're just in there fighting. It's right. not and a sport. You, yeah. In a way, then people also play up to that, you know, because they know that's what people come to see. A lot of people as well. We don't, we haven't had someone like this in the sport for such a long time that will just speak their mind, whether you know some of the things he says are right or not. But he just does come out and say it how he thinks it is, and it's like we, you were saying the argument about, oh, is it a sport? Is it a fight? It's very much the fight business for Sean. Whereas a lot of guys nowadays are like professionals are in yeah. suits. It's like I'm the guy. I've got my cool catchphrases. I come here to fight, you know, I get paid. Whereas Sean, like, it feels like he's like the the old days of the UFC coming back and fighting the way they used to, saying the things they used to. So it's really refreshing to have him in there. Well, the question is, like, do we need to go there? Like, is the sport more entertaining because people do go there? Like, do we need to? Could we just be respectful and just make it about martial arts? I or think like why the reason why Sean is such a big star now, though, is because he does go there. Exactly. The way he commands a room and stands up and will just take on anyone who gives it, that is exciting because you, you, yeah. are, you are showing up to see him fight. And if it feels like he can fight anyone and he's not scared of anyone, the fact that Sean is so much of an underdog. Yeah. You know, a guy with a style that shouldn't work in MMA, but it still does. The guy who will fight anyone, anytime, gets a shot at the champion and will still win. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, like you say, it's the, the dichotomy, I think, is like the key word for Sean. Because, like, the fact he's got to champion is so inspirational. And he, he says a lot of the right things to, to help inspire others. But then he also says a lot of other stuff that you don't want your champion to say. So it's just, yeah. Well, um, that being said, I guess, guys, stay tuned. We'll have this full interview used inside of the 10 Interesting Facts video. I'm planning for the 14th on that, so keep an eye out on that. But, uh, yeah, really appreciate Drickus for calling in. Uh, apologies about the bad video quality, but thankfully the audio quality was great. So uh, that being said, if you guys uh, are not members yet, I think this is a good opportunity to... Uh, advertise that because we may just go ahead and release this full unedited interview. We talked for 45 full minutes 
But um, yeah, become a member today. All you have to do is spend $2.99 to become a member at the lower level, which gives you our unedited discussions. And we do that two times a week. And if you want to get involved at a deeper level, we also have our writers meetings that happen Tuesday every single week. And uh, yeah, you can actually pitch ideas to us and we can chat back and forth. And yeah, it's just a really good way if you like the channel to support.